Hi there, this is Crystal. Before we dive into Access, let's put it into perspective with other applications. There are six main categories of applications. If you learn a package in each of these categories, you will have a well-rounded foundation on which to build. A word processor gives you blank electronic paper to write, edit, and produce text. Although many packages give you capabilities for incorporating graphics, the main function is to work with text. In the Microsoft Office Suite, the word processor is called Word. You can use Word to write letters, format text, bold, underline, italics, use different fonts, and much more. Let's say you have a letter you want to write to lots of people, like a Christmas letter, or in this case, somebody just won the lottery and they're planning a big party with all their friends to celebrate. The names of these friends can be stored in a list. With Word, we can make a merge letter and substitute data from a list. The list can come from Word. It can also come from Access. If you want the ability to sort and filter your list easily, you should probably be looking at Access. Use Word to write books and articles. A spreadsheet gives you a worksheet with rows and columns. The intersection of each row and column is called a cell. You can put text, numbers, or a formula into each cell. A file, called a workbook, can contain many worksheets. Spreadsheets are generally used for financial and other applications where calculations, graphs, and what-if analysis will be used. A lot of confusion originates with when to use a spreadsheet and when to use a database. Many databases do start out in Excel and then they grow to the point where it's better to convert the data to access. This is a big spreadsheet, not that Excel can't handle it, but it is much easier to slice and dice information in Access. A database gives you a way to structure information into rows, which are called records, and columns, which are called fields. Each of these collections is called a table. In the Microsoft Office Suite, the database application is called Microsoft Office Access. Databases give you capability to sort and filter information. Use the database window to make new objects or choose existing objects. An access database has six main types of objects. Tables, queries, forms, reports, macros, and modules. Once you decide what category you want, you will see those objects on the right. If you are using Access 2007, you will get around using the navigation pane. Here are the same categories we saw in the earlier interface. A phone book is an example of a database, as is a handwritten check register, your mother's recipe collection, and yes, lots of times, even an Excel spreadsheet. Access gives you the ability to create forms for easy entry. This gives you a lot of control over the interaction with the user, and you can make your forms look really great. You can also use forms for menus and for graphs. When it's important that you present the data with a professional look, Access has a fantastic reporting tool. The key to setting up your tables so they can relate to other tables the way they do in the real world is to define relationships. The most simple example is a relationship between two entities. In this case, we have people and addresses. People may have no address that we know of, one address, or many addresses. The addresses table, in turn, is linked to a table containing all the state abbreviations for those of you who live in the United States. Here we see an expanded relationship diagram with more tables. And here is an expanded relationship diagram that's been put into PowerPoint and annotated. Where databases really shine is the ease with which you can relate one table of information to another. Why would we want to store addresses, phone numbers, email addresses, and websites all in separate places? To illustrate this answer, let's take a look at a report showing contact information. One phone number, one email address, one address, and two websites. Two phone numbers, one email address, and one address. Two phone numbers, and two email addresses. No information listed. Here we just have an email address, one phone number, 
and one address, one phone, two email addresses, two addresses, and one website. Did you notice how, when there was no information in the database, nothing was displayed? Just like it should be. See these hands, these strong hands, will always work for you. With graphics and multimedia software, you can create drawings, images, animations, presentations, multimedia, and much more. In the Microsoft Office Suite, the graphics application is Microsoft Office PowerPoint, which is geared toward creating presentations and also provides basic tools for creating drawings and editing images. I have used PowerPoint to create this presentation for you. Paint is a simple graphics package that comes with Windows. Click on the Start button, choose Programs, then Accessories, and you will see Paint. It is a really fun little program to play with. Use products like Camtasia to edit video. This is what I use to record and enhance the PowerPoint presentation you are looking at right now. I used GoldWave to make the audio clips you hear. Microsoft Office Outlook gives you the ability to send and receive email. It is easy to write a message to somebody and they get it right away. You can also use Thunderbird for email. Right now I am using it to browse news groups, which are a great resource and a wonderful place to get help. To set up Thunderbird as a news group reader, go to Tools Account Settings and click the Add Account button. Choose the News Group Account and follow the wizard steps. When it comes time to enter the server name, type msnews.microsoft.com. Choose the news groups you wish to subscribe to. That's it! Now you're ready to read and participate in the Microsoft Online Communities. Using a VOIP program like Skype, you can make telephone calls over the Internet. Xfire is an instant messenger, as is Windows Live Messenger. Instant messengers enable you to chat in real time. A web browser enables you to render text, images, audio, and video on web pages. Microsoft Internet Explorer comes with Windows. Other web browsers include Mozilla Firefox, Apple Safari, Opera, and Netscape Navigator. Type a URL in the browser address bar to go to a specific place. This is Google, the world's most famous search engine. Type something in the Google search box and press enter. As you can see, there are 161,000 sites that have something matching my criteria. Luckily what I want is near the top of the list. Wikipedia is a terrific online encyclopedia. I just looked up Microsoft Access and here is an article telling all about it. This is Utter Access, which is a wonderful place to go for free help with Microsoft Access. Go to Microsoft's site to download free trial versions of the new software. Read blogs to gain valuable information and view links to other resources. MVPs.org is a great place to look up information as well as a search tool for Microsoft and MSDN support. One of my favorite places to get help with access and look up great code is Alan Brown's site. In summary, let's review the basic types of applications. A word processor allows you to write letters, articles, and books. Spreadsheets are for calculations, graphs, and what-if analysis. A database is to structure and relate data, sort, filter, report, and control user interaction. Graphics and Multimedia allows you to create drawings, presentations, video, audio, and all kinds of fun creative stuff. Email and communication applications let you send and receive email, participate in news groups, talk to other people, and web browsers enable you to look at text and images on the web, hear audio, and watch video. I'll pick you up. I'll carry 